but I wanted to read from Revelation 2, 24 and 25. We don't have much time left, but I'll just read quickly. It says, but I say unto you and unto the rest in Thyatira, as many as have not this doctrine and which have not known the depths of Satan, as they speak, I will put none other burden upon you. I'll put upon you none other burden. But that which you have received already, hold fast until I come. It's a message to the Thyatira church. And um, I was reading a different version of this this week. And it says, you know, unto you that have not known the secrets of Satan, <laughs> um, I will put no other burden upon you. And for those of us who have been doing the, um, the deliverance ministry, Bible studies on Monday, um, we, we learn about some things. But I realize here, the Lord was saying here, there are some secrets and some depths of Satan that you may never know and you may not need to know. But that which you have received, hold fast till I come. And it really came to me, not because of the teaching we've been going through, but because of the fact that we're in the week of Halloween, where there are um, so many things happening behind the scenes. Um, it's not just about kids in costumes. I think a lot of us know this. Um, and regardless of, of that, we don't need to know everything about it, but we do need to know that we can, we can come together and pray. Um, and we can, with the promises that we've already received, overcome the enemy. I realize I don't need to know everything about the enemy to defeat him. In fact, God has been defeating my enemies before I even knew <laughs> that they needed defeated. Amen. God has been, he's been, the uh, Bible says he said angels are camping around about me to deliver me. So I've, all of us, we've been getting deliverance but without even knowing we've been getting deliverance sometimes. The enemy has been trying things against us for years. And uh, we never knew what assignments were against our life. But God, amen. Sometimes in, a, in an anointed service, we have people who come and just feel led to pray for us. And we don't know what was going on. We don't know oh, what. God, hallelujah. We don't know what we got delivered from. Praise God. But we know that God did something. Thank you, Jesus. You know, that which you have already, saints, hold fast unto this. Don't let the enemy um, defeat you. Don't let him scare you. Don't let him, you know, on a week like this, uh, we, we got to be very direct as well. Some of you may have heard the way we were praying this morning. You know, we got to be direct against the adversary. We got to break every convention that he planned to have in our city, in our town. We got to disrupt them. And those of us who know how to pray, we will pray that whatever they plan to do is not going to work. Amen. By the power of the blood of Jesus Christ. We have unity as a weapon. And the enemy also has unity as a weapon. This is why the church cannot afford to be divided in a time like this. Uh, unity is, 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 it magnifies the power of God. And so I urge us as believers uh, to continue to pray one for another. Um, to take and find opportunities to pray. Um, we don't just come together to pray because it's a nice thing to do. We have to understand the method that the reason why we come together is because we are more powerful together. The enemy's power is weakened by the saints' unity. The Lord says in uh, Psalm 133, verse 3, that upon unity, God has commanded blessings. So we understand that we trigger blessings. We release blessings when we come together in unity. Um, unity is not just about, you know, my desire to have people on my side. We need, we need the unity of saints to, to, to accrue power against the powers of darkness and so opportunities to pray we need to understand this so so deeply opportunities to come together to pray is is one of the most important things for the believer it's something that we should crave to do it's something that we should you know when we're looking at our calendar at what 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 is free and what vacancies we have we should be looking at opportunities to pray with believers now i would have said even coming together to have church but unfortunately, sometimes we have made church so hit and miss. It's been so uh, sometimes aimless and purposeless. And that people come together because it was Sunday um, without any real, you know, strategy for deliverance, a strategy because, you know, for someone to be saved or for someone to receive the Holy Spirit. We got to a place where we were coming to church to see what would happen. It can't be that way. You know, people say, oh, we, you know, if you're going to pray, pray at home. You, you must be crazy. The Bible says my house should be called a house of prayer, not a house of preaching. My house should be called a house of prayer for all people. If we're going to come together to do anything, we must understand that coming together to pray is one of the number one things the church should be doing. It's prayer that makes a difference in atmospheres. It's prayer that liberates and looses people 
from sin before people come to your church and get saved it's praying people that prayed them out of sin sometimes it's prayers of mother who passed but but she piled up so much prayer that her account was full with god the prayers was just was just piled up for your deliverance so we, we don't want to take for granted this morning what, what what god has called us to do in prayer this is a high calling yeah this is a, this is a great meeting that you're coming together for it's 38 people online this morning what a privilege what a blessing that saints have come to push the needle in god's direction yeah to to, to change atmospheres and to bring healing to the land saints you are honorable for what you're doing don't be discouraged don't be put off and, and don't be uh, made to think like this is this is just some kind of ritual this is power this is intercession uh this is this is deliverance for those who are in need and so we want to continue to keep coming. Uh, one more verse to give you. The Lord says in Colossians 2 that um, the Lord has, you know, blotted out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. And having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly triumphing over them in it we are serving a god who has triumphed over all principalities and power and so that's why we sing hiding in thee our blessed rock of ages i'm hiding in thee you may not feel you have the strength to come up against all these things hide in christ jesus he is the one who has the power he has triumphed he has spoiled principalities and powers we don't stand in our own strength we stand in the strength of him who has delivered us um, who has spoiled principalities and powers from before the very foundation of the world, he made the sacrifice um, to blot out the ordinances that were against you. From the foundation of the world, Christ already set you up to be victorious. Saints, walk in victory. Walk in the power that Christ had given us from before the foundation of the world. In Ephesians, he says he has put, put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over the church. Praise the Lord. Christ is the head. He has all power. Further up, he's sitting far above in verse 21 of chapter 1. He's sitting far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world, but that which is in the world to come. You have no reason to fear. You have no reason to be afraid. The God that we are serving this morning has triumphed and he has called us to the hour of prayer. Continue to pray, saints, one for another. We thank God for that which is coming to the chat. We prayed mostly straight through and for all of these. But we want to continue to keep the people of God in prayer. Um, there's Jamaica communities are waterlogged. I heard you were praying for rain and now what? Now you've got too much? Well, maybe someone needs to stop the rain. <laughs> all right. Too much. The ground cannot hold it. Okay. Okay. Praise. Well, whoever prayed for rain needs to pray for it to stop. Victory testimony. It says, uh, thanks for all the prayers for my brother, Minister Smallwood. He's, he's out of the hospital and recovering. Great. The doctor said he showed so much strength that it amazes him. <coughs> it is Jesus and the prayers of the saints. Praise God. Continue, please, to give uh, your victory reports. It will encourage those who are